What's up guys? My name is Coach Summer. I'm going to take you guys through a shoulder and back workout. I'm here at the Resistance Barbell Club. Pretty fantastic club, I must say. Look at it. It's open space. It's got everything that you could possibly need. Um, I'm warming up. I'm going to take you guys through my full routine. And yeah, I hope you enjoy it and you can include it into your next set. So the first thing I'm going to start off with is just some resistance. Really, really light. You don't need this to be heavy. It's just, we're just trying to get blood flow. It's cold outside where I am. I got a pump cover on. So what I want to keep is thumbs pointed up. We're in the right direction. Shoulder width apart or hip width apart. This is where I want to be. Shoulder blades are back. Chest is out like a superhero. And I want to bring it down with control. Just trying to keep my hands in line with my hips, shoulder width apart as I do this. I'm gonna already, pretty immediately, you should feel this in your delts, your sides, your fronts, and your back. And so I'll continue to do that and just let it get warm. You're not trying to fatigue yourself. You just wanna get those muscles ready to do some actual work. So as I'm warming up the delts here, doing some front raises, I'm also gonna turn it into some pullbacks. Okay, now I'm gonna to try to target my back. In a moment here, I'll be taking this pump cover off so you can really see what muscles I'm working, but I wanna get that squeeze at the end as if I had a lot of resistance, just to mimic the same type of intensity and movement pattern that I'll be doing once I add some weight. So you can go this way. I also start from above here, and I would pull it back, Ooh, clip, pull it back and all the way back up. Let's get on the bar and show you what this should actually look like. So I really like to start any kind of push or pull day just with a dead hang. It just, it's good for your spine. It's a huge stretch. And you wanna take those muscles through their full range of motion in a relaxed position and then in a controlled, tense, you know, position. Goodness, I can't talk today. In a controlled, uh, contracted position. Just again, you wanna try to mimic the same type of recruitment patterns that you're gonna be doing when you actually add the weight. So I'll be here, nice wide grip, and I'm just gonna let my body hang. I'm not gonna stay right here. This is in a controlled position. I wanna completely retract, come down, and just hang. And I don't need to do a full pull-up. I just need to do a scat pull-up. Squeeze, squeeze, squeeze and relax. This is a really good way to start also trying to get better at pull-ups is just to do scat pull-ups. There's a part two to this pull-up warm-up. This is actually gonna help a lot of you guys who are struggling to do pull-ups be able to do it. Um, it's much better than a banded pull-up I see, I understand why people think that that might be an optimal way to try to start. However, when you do a banded pull-up, it is the easiest at the bottom, and it is, or excuse, yeah, it's the easiest at the bottom, and it's the most challenging at the top because now you're supporting your weight. Versus on a normal pull-up, it's most challenging on the bottom because now you're having to pull your entire body weight up, and at the top, you're just kind of hanging. So, let me show you how you can progress. This is something that gymnasts do uh, to, to try to work up to a muscle up because they need to have that power coming up. They need to have that power going down and then they gotta put it all into one fluid movement. So a Smith machine is actually one of the best places you can do this. I know a lot of people like to hate on the Smith but she's very versatile. So what I wanna do is I wanna set myself up about shoulder width apart and put my toes kind of directly in line with the bar. And I'm gonna move this up actually right here toes are in line now you see how my back is flared I want to keep that tucked just like this and now what I'm gonna do my weights on my toes and I'm gonna pull up get my chin just above that bar and then try to control the tempo coming down this mimics more of a pull-up see how my lats are flared <sighs> big pull chin above the bar squeeze good and I want to control my abdomen as I do this I don't want to push my butt out I want to keep it right here in this hollow hold everything's tucked sternum is under the hips hips in line with the toes down 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 
You should get a huge pump from this, by the way, just getting it started. I'm shaking. It's working. All right. Let's get to the workout. So that pull down machine, we're going to start there. You know, you're in for a rude one when you're already shaking. <laughs> so first of all, I want to make sure that this is set up properly. I want to be able to keep my feet flat on the floor without having to lift my heels to support me. So I'm just going to lower it. Oops, too low. There, that way when I push against it, God gave you with the full foot to use the full foot. So that's what we're going to do. So now I'm going to grab it. I'm going to pull it down, scoot underneath. And I want to be able to allow my shoulder blades to retract, but I want to control it first, cinch it down before I go into that pull. I see a lot of like <sighs> this all the time. It's a power move. But what you're doing now is you're recruiting so many other muscles that you're not training the one that you're trying to in isolation. So control is a huge part of lifting. You should be able to be a statue and it is just the muscle that you want to work that you should feel. Now I don't feel my lower back coming into this. I feel completely my lats. I'm squeezing as if I'm trying to break this bar in half. If I could, like you want to imagine that as you're pulling this, you're trying to snap it. So the elbows are going to drive inward. So again, chest is up, core is braced, full stretch, cinch down, pull, 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 pull. Squeeze here. This part of the lift right here, this squeeze, you want to be able to hold it. The weight does not have to be heavy needs to be controllable. You're gonna hear me say control probably 50 times. Put a dollar in the jar every time you hear me say it. This is not the heaviest I can lift, but tempo definitely makes it feel heavier. Start going for these half reps. I need a break from that one. <laughs> I'd say that that was my warm-up set because now we're gonna go a little bit heavier. Probably we'll get less reps here, but I still want to keep the same tempo. The same idea is that if I'm having to swing other body parts into it, then it's too heavy for me. And that's fine because nobody gives a shit about how much you lift except for you. <laughs> so lift what you can lift and do it well. So we're braced, we're going to stretch, bring it down, blow out the birthday candles. Full range of motion is definitely optimal when you're trying to grow muscle and strength, but when you feel like you can't do another rep fully without bringing everything else, go to the hardest part of the rep, which would be down here. See, I can't do it anymore without swinging. That's fine. I'm done. I can keep that weight there just because I felt like that was a good challenging rep range for me. I had control, but I was definitely feeling it towards the last like four reps. I'm not trying to train till failure here. There's no necessarily need for me. I think that it's Important maybe for somebody to try it every now and again, just so you have a good understanding of what failure intensity is like. Because I think a lot of people go like 10 to 12 reps, 10 to 12 reps, ooh, it burns, drop it. But it's like, if you really could have got a couple more reps in there, it's not heavy enough for you. So like train with intensity, you're already here. Be intentional about it. I also want to advise that I am doing a lot of core work right now because I'm bracing my core like somebody is about to punch me in the stomach. I don't get on the floor really ever to do ab work. I do all my core work in a lift. Walk it up. Be nice to the weights. Now I want to continue to do 
my most challenging lifts first. So lat pull downs, I'll go into shoulder press. I'm gonna mix up, it's a little bit of a push pull day. So I pull down, now I wanna push up, and then I'll go to T-bar row, and then we'll go to chest press. So we're kind of working these opposing muscles just because I feel like it is the best way to avoid improper posture as you are pulling in both directions. So we're gonna find some shoulders. Now, there is a slight bit of gap behind my back. I don't have to have that there. A lot of times they'll tell you to keep your back pushed here. It really, everybody's anatomy is so different that you kind of just have to take into account of your own body and what is allowing your spine to be supported the best. Me personally, I don't have much curvature in my spine. So I actually have to keep kind of a hinged posture. Otherwise, I would say, try to keep your shoulder blades where they're on the mat. Try to keep your pelvis where it's tucked and it's engaged. So if I was standing, I'm right here. So I'm just trying to mimic that same thing as I'm sitting down. It's a shoulder press, but I'm gonna be using my feet to push into because this, this is still, it's full body bracing. So we'll grab this, elbows tucked under, and it's just like you are punching the ceiling. So you see my wrist? I don't wanna have my wrist bent. I want them right here so that I can fully support the weight and not hurt my wrist. So I'm bracing, I'm bracing. Pressing up, bracing, bracing, bracing. <sighs> Pressing up. <sighs> Going back to any time that you are lifting weights, dumbbells, barbells, cables, machines, it's still an ab workout. Brace your core and you won't have to get on the floor. That should be on a t-shirt. Brace your core, don't get on the floor. When I'm doing a shoulder press and I notice I'm starting to shrug, lets me know it's probably too heavy for me. So I'm gonna lower it, because I'd rather get more reps in than less reps with sloppy form. And if you feel like it's taking you a while with lighter weight to feel the same sensations that you do when it's heavy, then bust out a couple really good reps with it heavy. Just before you feel like you're about to hit mechanical failure where your form gets all fucked up, or it and continue with slow speed. Continue that engagement. I see a lot of times people get faster on their reps. That was the last one. People get faster on their reps when they start to get tired or close to the end, that should not happen. <laughs> it should only get slower. It should only get more difficult to move the weight. So if you're trying to bust it out quickly because it's getting towards the end, you got a lot more in you. It's just starting to get uncomfortable. So the difference between making progress in the gym, progress anywhere is the only way out is through. You just gotta go through the pain, recognize it's part of the process and you feel so much better when you finish a set that was difficult versus just trying to rush it. So enjoy the suck as they say. Whew. Okay, I'm gonna do what I told you before that I'm gonna bring the weight up first. I might get like four like that. I also wanna point this out. When you are coming down on a shoulder press, the coming down part is probably the most important part. <laughs> so you don't have to go to the sky and then fuck these weights, I'm done. Like control it down. Again, control, put another dollar in the jar. I'm gonna say it over and over and over and over and over. The eccentric part, the lowering phase is equally if not more important than the up phase on any type of movement that you do because you are lengthening the muscle which is where it gets strong. So, get strong, get stretch, gets volume. You know what I like to compare this to? Is if my fists had water on them I want to control the tempo up and I want to control the tempo down because either way, if I shot it up or if I slammed it down, I got no more water in my cup. So if you always just imagine you're a bartender and your lips, you're trying to control shot glasses. Well, you're gonna, you're gonna do just fine. My wrists are still neutral. 
don't lose it. You also see how my elbows are like slightly in front of me. They're not bowed out to the side. I tell people that when you're lifting, we're all naturally like, we all have the natural uh, mechanics to move with good form. That's why babies are the best. They squat the best, they lift the best. When you're going to do a shoulder press, think of it as if you were asking a question in class. My elbow is slightly, nobody raises their hand in class and their elbow is bowed out to the side. Follow the natural movement patterns that your body wants to do. This is gonna protect your shoulder, your rotator cuff. There's no need to bow it all the way out to the side. So just think about natural movement patterns. Where are we gonna go? Hooray for shoulder press. <laughs> It's just something I see all the time is people try to really force their elbows out. You don't need to do that. Yep. I have nothing against pretty people, but if you look pretty on your last rep, Jesus! <laughs> you can lift more. <laughs> so Summer, tell us a little bit about your background. Well. And your, your education, your, your history with athletics. Yeah, well, I always grew up as an athlete. Um, my sports were a lot very singular type of stuff. I was track, uh, jujitsu, swim. I did dabble in softball, so I do like the team camaraderie. But so I've always kind of had that athletic edge. But I wouldn't say that I really got serious into strength training until I was maybe a sophomore in college. Uh, my degree, my first one, I have two bachelor's degrees. My first degree was in kinesiology, exercise science, and then I was going to make nutrition a just a minor. But then the curriculum was so close with dietetics, which is basically intervention with uh, nutrition for chronic diseases. So it's a little bit different than a nutritionist. I would say like a dietitian can be a nutritionist, but a nutritionist can't be a dietitian. Um, I worked in the clinical setting for a little bit, but then just realized it's very different to work with people who have to change their nutrition because they have to and versus people who want to change their, who want to change their nutrition because they have a desire to be different. So I left the medical sector, went kind of freelance. I've been a trainer for over 12 years and I went through NASM to get that certification. And I'm just honestly continued curriculum just on my own. I have a lot of podcasts that I watch, uh, a lot of different influencers um, and just learning by doing actually. You are a manager here at Resistance was my first client, Shay Connor. So that's pretty cool. Awesome, that is awesome. I just found that out this morning. Yeah, so I used to be the head coach at Orange Theory, which is a group fitness class. And I've kind of just graduated on to online training. I get to work with more people now all around the world. It just makes me a little bit more approachable and it just manages my time, but mm -hmm. still love fitness. Um, mm -hmm. I've done two physique shows, swept my first one and uh, had some real competition in my second one. So. Mm -hmm. Now I'm really, really gotta work now. So we're moving on to the chest supported row. I like this because it really isolates your back, allows you to get heavy versus if you were to do like a hip hinge barbell row or dumbbell row, you're pretty limited to by what your core and your low back can support. So literally having this chest supported row, I have something that is grounding me and I'm able to get my arms into full extension and like the first workout or work exercise we did where I'm able to pull back this is just a great way to isolate get into full range of motion without having to worry about other body parts becoming the you know the weakest link or the limiting factor this is just all lats and back here got a little bit of traps coming on but for the most part it's back, baby. So I like to do double first, and then I would ooh, move into singles. Anytime you do something that's single-sided, it's great to start off with your weakest arm, which generally for me is my left arm. And the reason being is you wanna give the chance for your dominant arm to just relax and that lagging body part to catch up. Otherwise, you're always going to be doing this game of having to catch up to the more dominant side of your body. So while you might be right handed, it doesn't mean that your right arm has to dominate the left arm. You can bring those lagging body parts up and just kind of keep this one at maintenance while you are doing that so that when you're ready, you can train them both efficiently 
And again, you won't have those cups of compensations and imbalances, honestly. So I'm gonna give that one a rest. And I'm gonna move on to more of the single stuff now that both arms are nice and warm. And my left is my non-dominant, so it's gonna kind of dictate where my reps are gonna be. So I'm gonna grab it. I'm gonna use my whole body to, ooh, to pull me back, secure me. From here on out, I get a slight bit of twist, but then it's all here. I like to hug this and keep my shoulders down and back. Put them away. Silence your shoulders. They're not up here. Relax them. It's all about the back. I fix my hand placement. I don't know if you can tell from this angle, but my abs are still working. <laughs> to the other side. I got about 12 reps on the other. I'm gonna try to get 12 reps here. I personally love back day, back and shoulders more than I do lower body, which is kind of funny because the division that I compete in is bikini and they are all about the glutes and the legs. Mm -hmm. There's just something so primal about pulling and pushing stuff. I don't know, I don't know what it is. I know some people can probably relate, but I guess it mimics a similar a similar movement pattern if you were to be in a fight with someone. I don't know what it is. It's, it's the Neanderthal coming out of me, I suppose. <laughs> but I like pulling, like pushing. I like the pump that it gives you. It's just kind of like immediate gratification. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. <sighs> that's, that's, that's different than what most of the female athletes obviously usually will uh, be it's saying when they come in weaker. here. It's, it's all, yeah, it's for it's most true. girls, it's legs and glutes, yeah. quasi like, glutes, quasi glutes. Yeah. I mean, I feel like my back is pretty strong, but we're about to go do a little bit like of the isolated shoulders and chest. And that's where it starts to get like, wah, wah, wah. For me, my chest is not my strongest body part. Mm -hmm. And I'm still working through a scapular flare. So any of you PT people might be able to notice it in my back, but simply just means that my shoulder blade is slightly lifted. Um, I had an injury to this shoulder blade a couple years ago. We all have these stories. It wasn't even from fitness, which just makes it the worst part. But my nephew was sitting on my shoulder and I guess he just saw something and descended. And I, out of reaction to, for this kid, I just pulled Reached my arm. Way back. It was like 70 pounds just yanked my elbow. So mm -hmm. I've been working through that injury for quite some time. So when you have a scapular flare, you have a lot of impingement in your shoulder and most times your traps really like to come into play with a lot of your raising movements to simply secure that muscle. So if you notice that your traps hurt or are sore often when you do shoulder work, um, might have somebody watch you when you're lifting just to make sure that you're not compensating uh, your shoulders using your traps. You might have overactive traps, just keeping that in mind. Okay, so we've done single, that feels good. I'm gonna go back to double. So I think I could probably scoot closer. There we go. Now we're here. Basically, I want this bar to be wherever I can fully extend my arms. Not just extend, but like my shoulder blades can come forward, rounding shoulders, and then be able to pull it all back. And remembering that what's gonna dictate my weight is whatever I not only can I pull, but can I hold for just a second. So it's that pull, hold, squeeze. One, two, three. One, two, three. One, two, three. So you don't have to do those counts. It just helps me in my head, which is why when I'm lifting, the music that I listen to is usually really slow tempo. That way I just don't get overzealous and try to stay with the beat and get fast. Just my personal hack. Okay, that's, that's good information. Because if I'm listening to something upbeat, I'm like, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. so, mm -hmm. so for me, it just helps me keep track of tempo. It absolutely affects your pace, yeah. Yeah, um, I thought I would never be this person, but I listen to podcasts when I work out a majority of the time for that reason. It just, it keeps me in what I'm listening to and a speaking cadence and it's not yeah. super fast, but 
Mm. I understand that for some people that's like serial killer style. So <laughs> listen to a podcast, Mind Pump, I highly suggest mm. listening to when you're working out <laughs> or a YouTube video. Okay, we're gonna do some alternating rows now. So still single, but we're gonna alternate, starting with that non-dominant. So we're here. And I'm gonna do this until I can't do it anymore. Piece of cake. We're gonna go move on to some chest press. You're handling iron today. Yeah, for real. So iron worker. The weight is not heavy, heavy, but if it was, I would use my feet to just position them onto my shoulders and then control that roll back. This is kind of the same I was all talking about with shoulder press. I want to keep my elbows kind of at a 45 degree. I don't want them bowed out to the side. Just kind of want to imagine that I'm pushing a wall. How would I push a wall? My elbows would be angled down. I would follow the same movement pattern. <sighs> oh, safety hack. We never just drop the dumbbells. We bring them back to your chest and we sit them up. If you feel like you cannot control your dumbbells and you let them roll off to the side, then you, my friend, are better off using a machine. Just saying. So. Thank you for that advice. It saves dumbbells from being bent and broken too. Saving dumbbells and rotator cuffs. And your shoulders. One video at a time. Yeah. And your shoulders. <laughs> yes, I, used to, I just see it all the time. It's like, oh, I'm done. And then just let it roll off to the side. So many things that can go wrong there, not only your own body, but somebody else, whether it's their foot, their foot. phone, their, their water. Yeah. It's just being mindful of your surroundings. Um, you asked me earlier, like what I do. So I actually do work with the military a little bit. My father and I, we've created these assault bike programs to help basically SEAL candidates going through the screener. We tried to find ways to help them basically improve their performance scores because what they were doing you know, an off season of being in the military was just like your standard calisthenics and running, but it nowhere near trains you to the heart uh, volume and rate capacity that is needed to get through Hell Week. Um, mm. I've observed the Hell Week screener three separate times and like you have the fittest looking guys and they drop out in day one, day two because they just can't keep up. And so these workouts on the assault bike are anywhere between 25 and 45 minutes. Oh my gosh. I mean, it's freaking brutal, they're, but you have to be a different type of person. Those in order. bikes are already, they're torture for yeah. 10 minutes. So, but part of the workout, it's not just physical. There's a lot of mental um, and communication components of it. And it's all about just being aware of your surroundings, even in a very fatigued state. So like, for instance, if their hands are on the bike and they want to take it off for a water break, they have to yell cover and somebody has to yell clear in order for them to be able to take their hands off. If oh, they take their hands off nice. without somebody yelling clear, they just failed the test. Yeah, really, wow. So okay. like, it which doesn't seem that hard, but when you're so fatigued and mm -hmm. all you can think about is like, when is my Latin next mm -hmm. break? Cause I mean, it's not 45 minutes straight of like max intensity, but it's like two minutes max, three minutes sub max. I mean, it's really pushing the threshold. So I just think it's really interesting and beneficial to Train your body, but obviously train your mind. Um, so just get in your workout, get in the zone, but still be mindful of your surroundings, you know, because especially in a gym, it's really easy to turn people off to being in a gym setting just because some asshole is not self-aware. Okay, round number two. If you want to get real dirty with your chest work, go for pause reps. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> it's another way, like if you can't go heavier, go slower. It really increases the time under oh tension. Oh my gosh, yes it does. Burn. Oh. oh goodness. I don't have a whole lot of chest work. I'm debating if I want to finish it out with, I have like this little tri circuit that I love. Um, I like finishing workouts out with Something that is still strength focused, but also that skill focused, um, power, explosive, dynamic. It's a way to just get the heart rate up. I don't want to lose my skill that I got in CrossFit. So like for instance, I think I have enough space. Feel free to move anything around. Scoot, scoot, scoot. So what I'm going to do 
is, yeah, we'll use these. So I'm gonna do three different things. So you just kind of get, get the full show here. So I'm gonna do everything on one side before I switch. So I'll have my row here. Let's work in tens, shall we? So on this same arm, I'm gonna go right into more of a skill movement, a snatch. So coming down, powered up. And then you burn it out with lateral raises. This doesn't have to be heavy. It's a small muscle. My elbow is leading in a lateral raise. Not my, not my arm. I'm pushing away from me. It is a sleeper circuit. I encourage you to try it. So that's one side and I like doing it that way because I don't really have to rest. I can go right into the next side and this complete side can rest while I'm working over here. So, number two. You can keep your hands off of the bench. It is a little bit more core based, but you know, bring yourself over to something that's supportive if you feel like you need it. This is basically a squat with an upright row, but instead you just let it go to the ceiling. Let it fall, throw it to the ceiling. Now it's party when the pony gets messed up. Nine. Nine. I love learning a new routine and watching someone else train. Yeah. It's like, yeah, I want to incorporate that. That's love the that. thing. There's so many, there is no one right way to work out. Exactly so many different modalities like you officially stop growing and learning when you think that your way is the only way mm -hmm. i love changing it up too i love just seeing what other people do it's nice to mix it up not only to feel things differently but mentally you know exactly. working out and building your body is so repetitive if you want to grow your body honestly it's same shit, different day better intensity mm -hmm. But you know, just for fitness sake and being able to be well-rounded, multifaceted, I think it's important for us to continue to try to learn new ways to train, new ways to move your body, and just keep it interesting. You, you know? have to keep it interesting. Exactly. Yeah. It keeps people going to the gym. The biggest, uh, the biggest reason people fail is that they just kind of give up. They just quit going. It mm -hmm. gets monotonous and boring. And you've got to keep it interesting. And you might find something that. For you personally, you like it better. Mm -hmm. I don't know, like I used to be such a cardio bunny, such a plyometric person, and then when I got into strength training, I was like, ah, this feels the best. Mm -hmm. We can do both now, but it's, uh, I love hip hinge rows. Try to get here. I haven't seen this method somewhere. I like that. A renegade row? I like this, a renegade oh, row. Oh yeah. yeah. Oh Yo, man, you can make Very it cool. filthy. I like that, yeah. If you get down here. Yeah, I've seen this. I've actually done this and I do enjoy it sometimes. 
so many ways. We won't do those. I'm actually shot for those, but yeah. I'll keep one. So now it's the same movement. I'm just going to alternate, which makes it a little bit more lower body because in order to pick it up, I have to come down to the ground. So ground, pull. I like playing around with the angles on a lateral raise because when you're standing, the hardest part is up here. But let's say you were leaning, the hardest part is right here when you're doing a lateral raise, is holding it in this position. So, again, angles will change the entire workout. Mm -hmm. So, play around. We all know how important angles are. So. Absolutely. <laughs> when I get towards the end of my workout, I kind of just play around with it. I've done the big stuff, the stuff I want to say like really matters when it comes to strength, but these small, these isolation movements are how you end up sculpting and chiseling the body. So if you were somebody, you know, in the realm or in the desire to compete, you have lagging body parts you want to build, this is where this small isolation stuff comes into play. The little pulleys. But also if you focus on training those and getting those strong, they're just gonna assist, I'm clearly out of breath. They're gonna assist in your big, your big lift. So don't neglect them, but I would say prioritize and always start with the big ones and then come down to these. But like if you really, really wanna build your delts, then start your work off with lateral raises, something really isolating. Again, workouts, the order, the exercises, they're all important, they all have in place, but just like anything in life, the right way to do something is just dependent on what your goal is. That's really it. Exactly, exactly, my philosophy. There's no right or wrong, there's just, it is or it is, uh, it just is. <laughs> like, yeah. There's so many ways to get in shape, so many ways to get fit, mm -hmm. so many ways. Just stay in the game. Just keep at it, keep at it. Go to the gym, go to the gym. What can you be consistent Work. with, you know? What do you enjoy? And focus on doing that and doing that well. Mm -hmm. This is a great one to be a statue in. You don't want your elbows moving too far. Kind of like lock them into place. Mm -hmm. They go down. This is all they need to go. They go any higher than this. Now my back's coming into play. I don't need that. I'm right here. Isolate the delt. A little bit of bicep in there. If you start to lean back, give yourself a kickstand. And put all the force into this back toe so that you don't lean back. And if that's not stopping you, it's really a good tip. We're gonna lower the weight pretty much the end of my lift. So now that my body is awesome. warm, yeah, now that my body's warm, I don't just kind of want to stop there. I still want to, so I'm going to find something I can get in the middle of. Usually a squat rack is nice. Honestly, this will work as well. I'll just stand in front of it, but I want to fully push into it, stretch. If your chest is really tight, what causes this right here that rounding of your spine especially being at a desk oh, yeah. so you want to make yeah, sure yeah. that you can pull that out if you have one side particularly mm -hmm. that's worse then single sided well that's a wrap for my workout today it doesn't have to be crazy long you don't need a laundry list of a ton of different movements i would say three to four really good staple movements really prioritize those, try to get progressively stronger on those movements, you know, and then throw in some fluff and some alternatives and variety just when you start to get bored. But for the most part, same stuff, but getting better at it every single week is gonna be your best bet. So thank you for coming along with me for my workout. If you want more of these workouts or just wanna follow my content, you can follow me at coach underscore Summer Frankie. I'd love to have you. We talk about a lot of stuff, not just fitness. I like to keep the tea hot. So if you like uh, controversial topics, 
then we'd get along just fine. So I'll catch <laughs> you guys later. I love it. See ya. Thank you.